Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Let's go. Now, 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 here on Gas Digital Network, it's your favorite show, Slick and Thick. It's your boy, Gerard Michaels, the funniest man you never heard of. Thicky Smalls himself. And to my left, standing at six foot three, 200 pounds, and every one of them is a problem. The master of punks, the tamer of sages, the king of the ring, Slick Rick Mick, the ruler. <laughs> Fuck, I was so close. I was just about to say, look so how professional close. he is. Look how professional he just so hit that close. shit two times in a row. Yeah, man. What's Slick up, Mick, baby? the ruler. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I am super excited because you brought along some friends today, bro. I brought around a, a couple heroes here. A couple one-two heroes. Heroes. In this, in this piece. Yeah, I, yeah, That's, that's yeah. not a small word. That's a big word. And yeah. I actually agree like with it. two syllables, bro. Well, hero. Yeah, it's also a sandwich, which yeah. I am very much a fan of. Uh-huh. Yeah. Anyway. Big fan of the hero sandwich. Now, so you, like, should I introduce the two heroes here? I think you should because listen. No further ado. We've had some pretty big guests on the show already, man. We've this had we've had movie stars, we've had adult movie stars, mm-hmm. we've had some some wrestlers, mm-hmm. we've had people you know with millions of followers and clout. We've had bank robbers. We got some diet. Some, some, an eclectic group, if you we will. We have had an eclectic group. Yes. Of individuals, and I have never been more excited. Have for we a had podcast. two people on at once though before? We did Billy and Bobby, but that never aired. Yeah, the people don't know about that. We don't also we also did episode. the two girls at the same time in Vegas, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but that hasn't aired yet either. I think it's going to air before this one, though, no? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, that was, a whole, that was a whole fucking party there, huh? That was a whole thing. The whole big thing. Anyway, anyway. So this is our first time with two guys. Way less excited. <laughs> but excited for the guests. With no further ado, what we got here is my longtime friend, Dustin Scrappy Lampros. Yo, yo, yo. Clap, clap, clap it up. Everybody clap it thank up. You, Show heroes you. their proper respect. Word. Anybody listening in the interwebs, do the same. And we have Ryan motherfreaking Montgomery. Montgomery, <laughs> clap it up. Do you go by Monty? Are you Monty? No, no, Is no. that too British? <laughs> yeah, they it's pulled up in here in Bam Margera's, Margera's car. No way, for real? Straight up, Purple Lambo. Wow. Psh, Lambo? Yeah, yeah Purple who got Lambo. Lambo. Who got Lambo cake around He's here? He's like, hmm, I don't know. Who does have Lambo Monty cake? Blue Eyes got Lambo cake? Monty Blue Eyes. You know what I'm saying? Could've listen. Could have used you in Vegas. Who could? Who could who fun, deserves <laughs> it more than these freaking heroes right here? Mm. So we talked about on the podcast before, I talked about my friend Scrappy, who was busting, uh, like, pedophiles and child predators. Yep. And these are the guys right here. That might right. have been on the episode that didn't air. No, I've t- we talked about it on a couple of You've them. You've talked about it on a we few. We talked about it on a couple. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely. Speaks very highly of you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I admire you guys, your guys' work. I, I'd like to hear a lot more about it. Obviously, you know, we're going to talk about it. I have some opinions. I, I, I dig the hell out of it. But I want to hear how you guys started this up. It's called the 561 PC. Right. Short for 561, five, five, which is our area code. And uh, PC is for Predator Catcher. Predator okay. Catcher? Predator Catcher. Predator Catchers, plural. But yeah, either one. Okay. Yep. Now, five, when six, you catch PC. the Predator, does it put in the self-destruct mechanism? Or yeah. how do you disable yeah, that? Exactly. Yeah. How do you disable nah. it? What is this, a superhero joke? I don't get it. It's from a movie, Mick. Engage in the culture one time. Nah. Nah? Nah. I'm Have you ever run into any aliens when you were chasing Predators? Close enough. Yeah, I would say they're pretty darn close. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think I saw one. Well, those would be my last two opportunities for jokes as we get into really <laughs> serious topics for the rest of the hour. No, nah, I think we'll make it work. Yeah, we'll figure um, it out. So t- tell us about it. How did you get started in this? Okay, what's, so your, what's your like passion behind this? So actually, I'll give a little quick of backup. Basically, and you correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have someone pretending to be like a child, like a 13-year-old girl texting with an adult man. You then say, come meet me at Walmart. Or something like that. They show up and <laughs> it's scrappy. I mean, less, it's pretty, less enthused. Pretty, in, in, in a like he's a handsome man, but handsome like not what man. I was looking for. Yeah. In a no. nutshell, he's, that's, that's he's Chris Handsome. There's a lot more to it than that. <laughs> yeah, no, there's Chris a lot handsome, more. Yeah. It's yeah. Chris Handsome. Right, so tell me about handsome. it. I want to hear about it. That's a right. boondocks joke. So, so we, we, we got the Chris Handsome thing. <laughs> it's a boondocks joke. All right. I don't want to, I don't want to, the guy from the internet and he's, and, and Gas Digital's like, ah, ah, that's a joke from 14 years ago. 14 years ago. It is. Anyway. 
So it's uh, you're you're almost uh, all spot on. So we we have a decoy that uh, that lives in another state. She's a grown woman. Um, she uses. Uh, oh, she used her picture. She poses like a young girl. Well, she she like basically like well she assists us, works for us, uh, on all of them. You know, she's the one who's chatting with the the predators. You know, she right. has like she has accounts online set up online that she talks to them. So they'll message her first and. But we never ask them to meet up, so I wanted to correct that one. We always wait for the guy to say anything sexual, say anything, you know, about meeting up, say a- anything. Let him all really dig his man. own grave. Yeah, give yeah, him enough rope to hang himself with. A kid's yeah. going to act like a kid. So if she's going to decoy as a kid, she's going to, I mean, she's going to act like a kid the entire time. So uh, if there is anything that is talked about sexually, it's no. responded to. Tell, in a, in tell a him how we started, though. Tell him, like, your okay, background so and. The, w- the reason why we started in the first place was um, I I'm, I've been in cybersecurity for about 19 years, which which in Explains simple terms Lambo. is uh, ethi- ethical hacking. I own a couple cybersecurity software companies, and for the last two plus a little over two years, I've been working with organizations across the country that are catching predators. Um, you know, there, there's a whole different long story in between that, but the the one difference between me for two and a half years doing this and what we're doing now is uh, I was finding information on these predators. So let's say, um, you know, John Doe sends me a message with a picture of a guy's face. He's using a fake username. He's using a fake free phone number. And uh, all he ha- all they have is a couple of messages with him, but he never shows up or they're planning to meet up, but they don't know who this guy is. Mm. Um, so they, uh, they, they relied on me for quite a long time and still do to some degree to find out who these people are with zero information other than sometimes. When like you say they, are, is this law enforcement that you're working with? or no. Other predator catchers, like other big, predator big catchers. organizations around the world, like the biggest ones. Interesting. Who are, some of, tho- who are some of those uh, So we, we have Trilogy Media. We have Courtney Elizabeth. We have Skeet Hansen. Uh, we have CC Unit. There's, there's so many, and they're, okay. they're in every single state. But uh, they're one time we will. Allow Justin Payne is, is a huge. No, this yeah, this is our this free is shout out. As many free I, I, shout outs I got as shit to Google tonight. Time, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but no, there's I nobody down it. here. There's nobody in South Florida other than us. Okay. So um, why Justin, does it fall on you guys and not law enforcement? You no, know, it doesn't. It doesn't fall on us. So, so what they would consider, which we don't like being called this, but we understand why, is it's, it's considered vigilante justice. You know, mm-hmm. we're taking the law into our own hands. Uh, the one thing we're not doing is we're not detaining them, but you know, the you know we're embarrassing them to the max of our ca- capability right. by by the law. Um, but there is no such thing as entrapment for us. There, we have the ability to call a, a predator's family members, their job, their wives, their husbands. You know, if it's a female, we have we have the ability to do things that police can't. Mm. Um, so it, going back into the original question, um, when when Scrappy and I got in, involved in this. Uh, we were hanging out one day. We were trying to think of some ideas, and I was like, "Hey, well, I've been doing this for you know for a while, but I'd like to go catch one in person." And it's hard to find somebody that can stomach this type of thing. Um, it was know. like, yeah, we were just hanging out, and you just kind of brought up. Uh, he brought up how he's been doing it for the past two years as like the info guy, like the behind the scenes guy, and uh, you know, it got on the topic because I was probably I have you know two people in my life that I'm very close to that have been victims of it. And I think, you know, we were just kind of chatting, and then he brought up how he does that. And I was like, you know, that that's crazy, you know. Mm. And then he was like, yeah, I've always wanted to do it in person myself, but I've never had anyone to do it with. And I'm like, I'm your guy. I'm like, I'll, I'll do that, you know. Like, I'll, I have no problem, you know, confronting these guys. And, you know, at the time, I really didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into. I just know that there's been people close to me in my life that have been victims of it, and here's someone who's been involved in in it for two years so i was like yeah you know like how do we like you know what, what's it about so he dove like to get the step by step how it happened he just went on uh the laptop at the house and he's like here i'll show you how easy it is and he set up a fake account within like two minutes and we had like 30 different like grown men messaging us and that was they, for a nine-year-old yeah that was for a nine-year-old Jeez. holy and shit he's like i'll show you how easy it is and then it was like holy shit. Yeah, it was with less than five minutes. I literally guess. less than five minutes. We I had multiple any, people. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm convinced. Like this is wild. Yeah. So then 
And that's just in this area? Yeah. yeah. Everywhere. That, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, but what we're, we're, we're doing, we're focusing on just this area, but it's, this is Yo, an God's, issue. this is God's work. No, yeah. You guys are doing so, God's work. So that's when, like, like when, <sighs> when he's seen that, that's when, like, kind of my stomach turned. I was like, because when he said it, he's like, watch, I'll have, I'll have 40 different people want to talk and meet up right now. I'm like, so he gets on there and creates an account within, you know, a minute or two. Just it, like on when, when you say on there, like, just like not to give chat, out too many. Like so chat, chat sites. Room? Just, just chat rooms. Uh, a teen chat. A free public teen chat yeah, room Yeah, like Florida online. teen chat. You can go on, like, you remember back in the day we had AOL? Yeah, so yeah, these yeah, teen chats. chats are just, like, crawling with grown crawling men with who are trying to fucking. Oh, it's all more, of, it's all more grown men than teens. It's all of them. Yeah, it's yeah. bad. And that's not what, that's, and, and the, the part, you know, this, I'm sure we could save this for later for more conversation, but uh, it's not the teen chats where we're getting these guys primarily. Facebook, Instagram. Instagram, Snapchat. Tinder. Mm. It's everything. It's uh, it, that's why we we reinforce the idea of checking your kid's phone uh, because you know you don't. Uh, these people think that you know their kids are talking to their friends on their games and uh, like on their Xbox Lives or Playstations and their Snapchats, all the different social media platforms and games, uh, and they don't know if they're talking to a fifty-year-old man or a thirteen-year-old girl. They they have no idea who right. they're speaking yeah. to, and they. They you know, just like we'll start, yeah. They'll just start talking. One of our first catches. But well, that's what I was gonna get at. So, yeah, go ahead. then basically, what, how it, like, you know, giving you guys the full rundown. Uh, like, it was like a week later, and he brought it up again. He's like, "Hey, are you serious about doing this?" I reached out to a couple of decoys, people that could potentially decoy for us, and I'm like, "Yeah, you know." And he's like, "But they won't be able to start working for us for or start decoying for us for like another week or so." So he's like, "We should just like you know create a." account right now just to see you know we had like a saturday night not doing anything and so we did and we created two different accounts and it was in about like an hour later we had some like 60 year old guy wanting to meet up with like a 13 year old boy and yeah and it's you know it's a pretty it's pretty, messed up yeah like that's what i'm saying i don't even it's sometimes it's, it's like messed up. It's, and, it's, and it's kind of hard to like it's sick you know, almost like verbalized as well, but like it's just, it's we know it's not good for the kids. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's it it yeah it's it's sick to put it, it, it simply. It's life. It's and life. It's, and it no, changes no, shit. Yeah. and it changes people. And I I've heard like that's a lot of times the way it perpetuates. It's like they're almost like the reproduction. Like the kids who get you know molested and fucked with at a young age, they often become uh, a pedophile themselves because yeah. it, it kind of stunts them and it j however uh, it does it fucks with their wiring no you know what i mean it, of course we ran into creation. that a few times yeah we ran into that but no I they bet. like like yeah these these guys are sick you know and i mean like they're literally like preying on children that's why they're predators yeah and that guy uh specifically you know we talked to him for like not even an hour he wanted to meet up and he's like oh, i just want to meet up and meet 11 o'clock on a Saturday night right. on, you know what I mean? At a Starbucks that was closed basically like, and you know, it was kind of an interesting, uh, it was like our first run, you yeah, know, we never it done it in first yeah. and we didn't have any, like anything to really go off of. Like he didn't talk sexual or anything, but he wanted to meet a 14 year old boy and said, Oh, let's just meet. That was a right. nine year old in that case. Uh, okay. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was a boy. Cause yeah, regardless. So <coughs> you, know, you have uh, like a situation, let's say where that, that type of thing, and it seems platonic or something like that. Right. You there's heard nothing about platonic about it. There's nothing. So this, that was no. going to be the question. So if you, you no take way. a guy like Michael Jackson, you, like Corey illegal. Feldman and those guys where it looks like they were having sleepovers. First no. of all, no, they're very it, sexual. They're sending illicit photos. I mean, a lot. It's illegal though to, Ask a minor to meet off the As internet. it should be. I'm, yeah. I'm just yeah. trying so to get an no, understanding no, I don't of, like, because these people live among us. These are your, I mean, this could be your doctor that, that you're you're confronting. This is not like, you know, I've watched a couple of your videos, and what really struck me is how normal these people seemed up until the point of confrontation, right? So it's like, you know, what, I guess, what I'd like to get out of today is getting some sort of understanding of what these people have in common. You know what the common traits are what type of things like what should we be looking out for in our communities if we're not going to be to be on the hunt ourselves i don't like, want to answer for them but i don't think you can exactly i don't I was think about you can say tell. there is no dip, there is no like it's it's crazy after we've done this you know and we've caught as many as we have and and you go out you start kind of looking at people different like you're like i bet you know like this guy is this a guy i'm gonna be catching in a week you know but, but like, are, are there traits that that they no, have that no no you can't that we've we can go through all the guys we've caught and they're all different from the t's some one's an ex-marine 
you know, three tours in Afghanistan. Wow. One One's a father of two boys. One's a, you know, one's a guy that's working for the water company in Delray. Like We have one that's about to meet us that's a doctor. I thought you just brought up a doctor. Yeah. We have one that's going to meet us, like, in the next couple of days who's a doctor himself. Yeah, there, there's you can't the tell. Yeah. There's no preventing it. What prevents it, I mean, there, you're ne- we're never going to be able to stop it. Like, it's going to happen no matter – how many people catch it's just going to be the same. Oh, it's going to be more and more and more. W- would you say it's more prevalent in in kind of um, the heterosexual proclivities or? It's both. It's uh, both. It's, I would say that, you know, uh, and this, is, this isn't this is really my opinion. This is more factual that, you know, the uh, grinder and the apps like that, uh, they're more hookup apps than they are dating apps. And if a, a kid jumps on an app like Grindr, for example, um, they're asking for trouble regardless if they're meeting up with a kid or they're meeting up with an adult. But, mm-hmm. you know, adults are a lot more willing on – it has nothing to do with their sexuality, but they're a lot more willing to meet up with somebody off of an app like Grind. Because that's specifically what it's for. Yeah, that's specifically what yeah. it's for. And, uh, and that, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if you see that app on, on your kid's phone, it not only it, – I wouldn't be mad at them personally for their sexuality. I would be getting the app off of their phone for their safety. Yeah, and the so there was an episode once of Mr. Robot. I don't know if you've ever seen. Have you seen Mr. Robot? Of course. You know the episode I'm speaking about, where the guy goes into the coffee shop oh, and there's yeah. free Wi-Fi, and he's, um, I guess again, like it's a legal hacker or illegal in this point. He uses the free Wi-Fi to go through the guy's, uh, what was it, the search history, and he found yeah. out that this guy was peddling kitty porn out of the uh, out of the coffee shop, and it was just this everyday shop owner. And apparently that was based on a true story. There was a guy in in, um, in Europe who was on, he was a hacker, and he was using this this coffee shop's free Wi-Fi. He was like, oh, let me check out what this guy's got going on. And then, boom. It's like, holy shit. Yep. Yeah, and, I mean, that, can, that, that reminds me of, uh, if, if you, I don't know if you guys are interested in hearing what got me involved two years ago, but I can tell you. It very actually, much so. Okay, so long story short, this is a very long story, but uh, I got a text message from a friend's wife. Uh, with some extremely graphic screen, screenshots, nothing you know, nothing illegal, but the mess. Like it was, it was. You know, what the forum is like you know, someone mm-hmm. makes a post and then sure. people comment underneath of it. So I got some forum posts sent by my friend's wife, who was you know saying you need to check this website out. This is disgusting. Can you do something about it? Because everybody you know they assume I'm a hacker. I can do anything. You know, that's people just assume that. So can she you sent improve it my th- credit score. Oh, that's I get asked that by everyone I know. <laughs> So, so it wasn't a no, Mick. <laughs> it wasn't a no. <laughs> but uh, so I, I, I seen these screenshots and it, it got to me. You know, it genuinely got to me. And uh, and uh, I went on their website and skipping all of the technical details, I found a backdoor. I installed three backdoors on their server. I was able to download all the message history for every user. I was able to find their uh, find their, their private messages where they were trading photos back and forth. I consulted with an attorney uh, to make sure that I wasn't breaking the law by grabbing their data because I didn't want to be in possession of any of that stuff either. So there's nothing illegal about having the text uh, messages or the contextual evidence. Um, from there, I found the owner of the website through an email address, and the email address came back to a guy named Nathaniel Larson, who was a guy running for Congress in Virginia. So I was like, oh, my gosh, this is insane. This is going to go be all over the news. I, I, didn't, know, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew it was big. So I saw there was about 3,000 active users on this website who were doing horrible things. Uh, one, I'll just name one example. There was a father that posted a photo of their child in the bathtub where you couldn't see everything, but you could see enough. And it said on the top of it, um, uh, they have no idea what's going to happen to them tonight. And then underneath there was comments with other people saying what they were going to do to this person's child. Oh, my Sick God. God. And at this point, remember, I'm, I have access to their server, and they don't know it. So after I spoke to my attorney who told me, hey, you're, you did break federal law. You know, like if you report this, you're risking going to prison. But I was just thinking to myself, if I bring this to trial, what jury is going to convict me? Yeah. I mean, I just don't think guilty right. or not, I, I, I'm willing to take my chances. Um, so I, I reached out to my attorney, reached out to another attorney in Virginia since he was, run, you know, a guy trying to run for Congress. Um, I spoke to over 10 news stations. I have some of the calls recorded with them. Everybody was interested in this story. They thought it was amazing. As soon as it got to legal, they 
not not one of them posted the story. Even when I said remove my name from it, remove any of the info I obtained illegally from it, just alert people that this website exists on the internet. Nobody posted it. So I got an FBI uh, report tip line number. That, I think it was a website, ic3.gov. It's an internet complaint center report number. So I got that. Um, the, the kicker, which is what got me started in this after all of that, is six months later, I'm, I'm watching the news and I'm reading the news online. I see Nathaniel Larson arrested at an airport at a layover with a 12-year-old girl that he kidnapped and raped. And they were fully aware of what he was doing. They're fully aware of the 3,000 other people that I caught on the website with their IP addresses, their emails, their chat history, everything about them. A, a case you know, on a golden platter for, for any, any, any district attorney just letting this slide. and nothing happened. They didn't even bring up his websites in the news articles. So Gee, he, wow. he, yeah. So, you know, not, not saying that, uh, that, that things wouldn't have happened to other children with the, all the guys, you know, that no, I you have to think that, I mean, how many people, that's what it makes sure. me feel through like that inactivity you know? had their lives ruined. Yeah, because there's and there's there's those guys are still you know they haven't been arrested. I still have the information at, right now. You know I'm ready to hand it over again whenever they want. Um, but the guy Nathaniel Larson, the guy running the website, that's in prison. It, the 12 year old would have never been kidnapped and raped oh. if they would have took them. If they would have took to you. if they listened to me the first time. And yeah. uh, and it's just that's, that's gotta that's, be frustrating. It, it was frustrating. It's frustrating to me now. I've been thinking about it. So it's. Sure. It's getting, uh, it's it's getting, you know, it got me motivated to do something in this in this field, not only, uh, you know, just to help, but I, I didn't want any notoriety. I didn't want my name attached to anything. The only re- only time my name was attached is when we started to do things together. I stand behind the camera when when Scrappy confronts them, um, I, but you know, now I'm okay with that. It's fine. But the goal was never about me. It was about the kids. Right. D- yeah. Does it become? Um overwhelming at times when i was with value tainment we had uh, a moderator a facebook moderator on and um two of the things well there was three things about that interview that that drove me out of my mind the first one was that they have access to everybody's information at all times like they can read hillary clinton's messages if they're on whatsapp and that, that's in the term of agreement and everybody uses it that's wild two is that they shut people down for dissenting political opinions all the time, and it's a button. They just hit a button, and that's it. Yeah. The guy's gone. But there's, they know that there's entire groups that have child pornography. There's animal cruelty groups where they get on at the same time, and they'll slaughter animals live via Facebook Live, and they know this is happening. Right. And it takes months for some reason to shut <clears throat> these groups down, and then the groups get on a Discord server and get another group together, and all 30,000 of them are in, the, in another chat the next day. Right. I, I, from the outside looking in, the frustration is, one, it becomes overwhelming that this many people are doing this, right? Like, is it actually, how many people are engaged in this? I, I, let me try to organize my thoughts for a second because I'm rambling. I'm sorry. This is a lot to, to process. Uh, are there... When you say that there's 3,000 people, are there 3,000 people actively engaging in this? How many people are, are watching because it's macabre or, or they're just... So that, that's actually a great question. This specific website, and 3,000 is, is nothing compared to what the real number is and you know, what we're actually dealing with. This is just one website. Um, to get onto this website, to become a member of it, you had to fill out an application where you had to answer all of these horrible questions that anyone in their right mind, even if they were interested in reading it for the macabre reasons, like you said, they would have to answer questions about their, what, you know, what they like You know what macabre means, children. right, Scrap? I didn't think so. I barely know. <laughs> it means, like, bad. It's, like, dark. Like yeah. Dark, yeah. Dark, dark, like. Yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't like Jar watching. likes to show off with his big little words. Like, if I asked you, if I asked you this question, let's say you, you like dark things. If yeah. I asked you this question, um, what's so attractive about a nine-year-old's boobs? Yeah. Would you answer that question? No, exactly. That, that, that in and of itself, well, it would almost be like a fuck. Who the fuck is asking this question? Like, exactly. Okay, so Fed. Of course, you yeah. can you can you can sign up for an account if you fake these answers. But I would say there was a lot less people there trying to, you know, participate for the thrill factor rather yeah. than you know, I. I, I can't tell you for a fact, but I can, you know, it's just opinion. Well, th- so the reason I asked, like when I was in when I was in college and. Um, you know, freshman year, what was it like? Faces of Death was a big website, that, like going yeah. around and like it, it just goes around a college dorm and like you're kind of a pussy if you don't look at it and you're like, I don't ever want to watch this. I don't want to see somebody getting fucking beheaded by a cartel. Like, this is gross. And the Pain Olympics. Remember? Yeah, that was unreal with the yeah. guy hammering his scrotum to the like, anyway. The, so 
I don't. I, there's a part of me that doesn't want to believe that walking amongst us are these fucking monsters. You better believe it, bro. I know, but I like. I want to know what the actual a threat it's, assessment. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean like a threat assessment. Like there are three thousand fucking people. There's really probably more. That's only one website. That's There's nothing. one website. There's probably way more. D- Dustin and I, in, in two and a half, three months, have probably, if, if you include our decoy, we've probably run into three thousand people that may not have started a chat with us, but. It, 3,000 is a low number. So, so why is this not like a task force thing? Like, why is this not like priority one, two, three, and four for the internet task force? Why are there not, why are there feds, in your opinion, why are there feds that are watching the fucking Facebook accounts of concerned parents in Austin, Texas that go to fucking, you know, city council meetings? I don't know why, not, why we're not worrying about almost like this at the, height of everything yeah. else it's it's attacking the weak and innocent the most you know? vulnerable amongst us yeah. i mean if we as a society can't protect our most vulnerable what what society I mean, why, do we what effort have? are we putting in to do this yeah to nip this in the bud which is what i see you guys doing but yeah. we're doing it more publicly so i can't speak for the police and, and i mean obviously jump in anywhere you want but I, I i do know that the internet crimes against children is something that this county does have um i can't tell you how often they decoy i can't tell you how often they make arrests um, I know that... Uh, Sounds that, like, Well, you guys are very proactive about it. Yeah, we just do it a different way. Do you think that proactivity way. Is, ha- is happening elsewhere? I hope so, but I... I and nothing really against know, right? them. Nothing against no, I'm, them, I'm, but I'm I don't just, think so. No, right. fuck that. Nothing against them. It, shouldn't, it, should, take, it, it should, shouldn't take fucking James O'Keefe honeypotting a fucking Pfizer executive for us to find out that they want to mutate a fucking virus that kills millions of people for profit incentive. It shouldn't fall on Project Veritas. It shouldn't fall on you guys to have to fucking infiltrate these guys and then fucking actually all but apprehend them. I mean, what what are the structures we have yeah, in place here? Let, let's talk. Let's talk about that real quick. So, when you guys after these guys propose a meet, and then you you agree to the meet, and you guys are there. So, what do you say? Like, meet me in aisle fourteen of Walmart or something, or like how does how does that go down? And then. Wh- I've seen you guys have them like doing push ups and doing different things, and then they get arrested on the way out, right? Yeah, no, I mean, it's pretty much like our decoy will set up, like, we'll make it, she tries to be realistic or make it re- seem realistic. Like, she's 13, she can't, they know she can't drive. Most of the time, they'll say, Well, you can't drive, so how are you gonna get there? Or, Where are we gonna meet? Or, How are we gonna do this? Like, can I pick you up? And she'll be like, No, you can't come to my house, but I live near a Walmart. She goes, I, And then she'll say, I can walk there. Okay. And so then they're like, okay, that seems, you know, legit. So then she'll be like, yeah. And like sometimes the decoy will say, like, uh, we have a, uh, my mom, my mom gave me $40 to get a dog collar. I got to, that's why I'm going to Walmart. And that's my excuse, you know, because I'm not allowed to be out at past this time or whatever. So we'll have to hang out quick. Yeah. And so they'll believe that. So I'll send her, we'll, we'll go to Walmart. I'll go to the dog aisle and I'll send a picture of like a dog collar and then she'll send it to them. And it makes it like she'll be like, I'm here, you know, like mm. and in every case, uh, they're pretty similar, like what she has them do for the most part. But sometimes she might say, um, we won't talk. Just make sure we see each other wave and then I'll follow you out because like the predator would be like, they'll be like, well, you look so young. I can't just walk up to you and like we can't be seen together. Like they know they're doing wrong. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So they just can't help. This, it. This yeah, they can't help it. So they'll sometimes they'll say that they'll be like, "How are we gonna do this? Like you look like I, I gotta act like you're my little sister or daughter." So yeah. this, this is I, not I've a. Seen, I've seen people almost in like uh, the news and like these weird organizations almost try and have sympathy for people like that. Oh yeah, this whole and, it's, this and, whole that, and that, that shit that that shit drives me fucking crazy. Whole because yeah. I think called, love has no age. Yeah, that's fucking. No, it very clearly it. does. It yeah. does have an age. Yeah, yeah. California's yeah. trying to normalize it. A lot of places to, are, man. They're, and there's a massive community that is behind the normalization. I mean, they, they're the first thing in politics is to own the narrative, and they they want to get rid of in in some circles. They're trying to get rid of the word pedophile because they say it's stigmatized. And they try <laughs> to change it. Good. They try, they try to change it to. Uh, uh, maps, minor attracted persons. Yeah, because you know, mm-hmm. like to yeah to like normalize it, and make it okay. Yeah, because you're so far it. from it. No, it's no it's different just... than you know when a legal alien became undocumented citizen. One's a crime, the other is a you know a hold up in bureaucracy, right? So it's they normalize it until it happens to their kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and, no. and it's it seems like it's and I, I guess I gotta kind of watch my verbiage when I say this, but like. Some people are straight, some people are gay, some people like feet, some people like... However people are born and what they like, this one victimizes people. If you're, if you're somehow into rape, you, yeah, you go to jail. Like, you, you, 
if, if, if so, I had my druthers, you get a bullet in so the head. The, the same with these pedophiles because they're, you know what I mean? If you, if you can, su- can survive and can fight the urges for your life, good. You don't have to go to jail. That's tough, man. You know what I mean? That's but the, but tough. you better do it. If you, if you break that, cross yeah. that line one time, fuck you. Yeah. You're, you're, you're hurting somebody. Do, do you guys think in all your experience with this that this is learned behavior or do you think these people are, are born with, with this? Like uh, wires crossed, yeah. kind of? I mean, it, it goes back to like what you were saying, like, People that have had it done to them when they're younger, you know, and then not all, every case or all cases, but a lot of times they'll be traumatized from it, but then they'll for some reason want to do it to someone else, right? You know? But I mean, yeah, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what it is. So, so my cu- my cousin worked in this field. I'll give a shout out to Doctor Stephen Harron, and he he wrote. Um, Extensively That's not the this. doctor you guys have. <laughs> no, he wrote, he wrote extensively on the subject. So he, he worked um, with violent uh, sex offenders who were minors, people that that, cre- uh, that did violent sex offenses before they were 18 years old. And uh, I believe out of 500 people he had at that institution, 490-something had been themselves victims of it. Right. Um, and the... the uh, so, sorry. Um, the theory, I think, goes... The theory I think goes in those circles is um, it's a, it's about power, um, and they they felt powerless, and then they want to then feel powerful, uh, and that's how they that's how they've learned to be powerful because that was the most powerless they've ever felt. Yeah, the the, the innocence, you know, mm-hmm. like we had a guy recently say, literally out of his mouth, say, I guess it was her innocence. You know, we asked we asked what was attractive to him about a 13 year old girl uh, we we rolled up at his work on in the middle of a busy night and uh, and sat asked for waters and uh, and said hey can we speak to, to whatever you know his name is and he came up to the table uh, we said we, we need to speak outside or we're gonna, and the police are coming you know they, normally we give him an ultimatum either you talk to us or we call the police and then the police come anyway um, so he's outside talking and, and we asked him that question we said we said what uh, you know, what is attractive to you about a 13 year old girl? And he was like, it took him a second, but he, the, the first word out of his mouth was her innocence. Mm, and wow. when that, when he said that, I mean, obviously there's so much worse that has been said, but just hearing that just, I don't know, made my blood boil. Because it's like, he wants to take that innocence away. Like yeah. And then to, to, you know, I, there's so much more to that story. That's an hour and a half long catch. If, if I'm not wrong, uh, Scrappy has, yeah, about an hour and a half in, the police show up, which, you know, uh, the sheriff show up. And you guys call them ahead of time, or how does that? Um, so, or, yeah. so, like, going back to, like, the original question right. with Walmart, I like to try to stay in. Yeah, um, no, no, I, I was going to get back to that. Yeah, so, like, a lot of time, like, in the beginning, you know, we weren't sure if the cops were going to be on our side. A lot of times, these predator catchers don't have the cops on their side. They are they don't encourage the predator. The yeah, you, make don't look, do it. you make yeah. them look bad. Yeah, they didn't encourage vigilante. Yeah, they, they don't, don't want to encourage that. it. So we weren't sure. So for the beginning, we we were just gathering all the information, all the evidence, and then sending it into the detectives. But uh, yeah, like the the Walmart thing was just it's just such a realistic way to you know get them to come there and in the public safer for us, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was it was just so simple because. For for us, like setting that up, they they just think, okay, we're gonna go to Walmart, meet you know, meet them, and then we're gonna leave together. That's what they think in their head, you know. Right. And then, you know, sure enough, we'll wait over by a section to where we can see the entrance. And not every time do we see them walk in. A lot of times, there's a couple times where they've already they're already in there, and they, they came way before they said they got there. You know, they were scoping out, make sure there's no cops, trying to like look at her, look for her before she, they said, you right. know, I'm here. We but show up early too. Yeah, we show up early too. But okay. we'll be we'll go to the dog section. But there's plenty of times that they're just sitting in there waiting, just waiting in the dog section on the phone or walking up and down looking, you know. So and but uh, it's easier for us to watch from the entrance and the follow them, like see them walk in and then follow them to the dog section, kind of. But yeah, do, when they come so, in, when you guys watch them come in, do they have hesitation? Are there second thoughts? Do they think? They shouldn't be doing this. Are they excited? They must what, realize what they? their freedom's in jeopardy. No, yeah, of course. I, I wonder, I mean, or the thrill of the hunt for them. I wonder, yeah. like, are they... Probably a mix of the two, but probably, you know... No, it. for sure. They're, like, you know, the one guy said, he's so, so dumb. Literally looks at me and goes, oh, I I know. I got here early and made sure there was no cops. Yeah, he literally <laughs> like, said that. Like, like, bro, what? 
Like, what are, what are you doing? What are you saying? Like, you're literally admitting that you know that you're doing something highly wrong. And that's why I asked him. I said, so you knew this was wrong. He goes, yeah. And I go, so that makes you a bad person. He goes, well, no, bad people. I'm like, all right, I'm going to ask you again. So this may, like, like, you know, it, it just doesn't process in my head. They're able know? to justify it. To they try. And that Happen right there is what really pisses me off. It really makes me want to just smash their head. But how, it's around. like I, I can <laughs> almost sympathize with that because how could they not want to li- smash their own heads and kill themselves? They literally you know want to I mean? justify their actions. And they all do well, they, it every they single to, time. Right? I mean, kind of have to to be okay with, I, I would think, being alive and. I guess. Out, I mean, if know they know don't I mean? have. That's a good point. Because otherwise, if they knew what they were doing wrong, if they knew what well, they, 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 they were evil, know, they would. They, yeah. A lot of them they would, they they can't help themselves, themselves they from talk society. They, they, yeah. They go in the woods and live a life deliberately, or whatever. Like they, yeah. they literally can't help themselves. That'd be way more admirable. In a in a way. In a way, what in do you mean? Way. Then then. Uh, if like, you were born with that affliction, I really think there's probably only one admirable way to go about it. Which is, kill yourself, right? Can't say that on YouTube. And <laughs> a lot of times we try to wait for the. Re- Omri, that's gonna have to be bleeped. <laughs> a lot of times we wait for the reactions or try to see like we'll, we'll ask them because that's what we're doing. We're like interviewing them basically, ask them questions, trying to get in their head to understand why they're here, like sure. why they're really doing this. How many other times have they done it? Mm-hmm. You know, is this your first time? Are you, you know, habitual with it? Whatever. But it's a lot remarkable of that- to me that people don't really seem adversarial with you and what. You've posted anyway. It, what do you, what mean? Do you mean adversarial? They're, like the, they're, the, the the predator. Yeah, the predator is almost like they they happy to have get happy to have the talk. Well, no, they don't have a choice because no, they, they we'll, feel like they don't have a choice. Yeah, because yeah. we'll walk up and like when the I walk call. up to them, I'm like, hey, like can we, you know, like a couple times I'll walk up with a dog collar and I'll go, hey, you think this is a good one? And they're like, and I'm like, you're here to meet a 13 year old, right? Or like, what are you doing here? That's usually what I say. I say, yo, what's you know, what's up, bud? I'm like, what, what are you doing here? You know? Have a seat over here. Yeah, you know, and here's the thing. They're free to go. That's the thing. Everyone goes, how do you guys get them to talk? They're free to go. I just, you know, I almost, Ryan's I almost so want good. to cut that part out. <laughs> yeah. I don't want them to feel like they're fucking free to go. No, 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 because we're not to. police. We got to let them know that. We got to say, hey, we can't detain them because that's how these catchers get in trouble. It's illegal to, like, detain or say, hey, you got to stand here and talk. Now, I won't go out of my way. Me and him got better at this instead of saying it right in the beginning. We'll wait till them till they ask us. But I'll just, you know, when I walk up to them, like, you know, let, let's chat. Initially, they don't want to chat, and you know, they'll try to walk away, or whatever. And I go, okay, that's fine. And you know, thankfully, Ryan's so good at what he does that he can get all their info on them. So as soon as they go to walk away, I say, hey, mm-hmm. don't, no worries, we're gonna we're gonna be at a uh, blah 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 where you uh, are. Oh, no worries, okay. this so is your wife's name. They're gonna want to stay and almost talk their yeah. way out of that. Oh, this is your wife's number, right? And her name. Okay. No yeah. worries, we'll really call her. Smart social media passwords. They're so, so, get out of here. Yeah, really. yeah. yeah. Sometimes I'll drop the last four of their social in it, and, and he'll walk around with the iPad. It'll be I'll have everything. With everything. I'll say, oh, this is this isn't you, like, and I'll put up a side by side, and they'll be like, all right, let's talk, and I'm like, yeah, I think that's what's best. I mean, because we can go one or two nice. ways here. You can just walk away and get arrested, or and. The whole time, like, and I don't, it, it doesn't matter if they see this because they're still, they can't help themselves. They'll still do it, and they won't think it's happening to them, even though 90% of them will say, I hope you're not a, I hope you're not working for the cops. I hope you're not a, you know, a predator, one of those YouTubers who, who embarrasses grown men. They'll say that, and they'll still show up. Like, it's just yeah, like. they fully are aware of it. Fully aware well, of I, it, mind-blowing. I would wonder, because this community seems to be tight, right? Like, and do they kind of catch on to your tactics and put them out there for other people to no. recognize? Or no. no. Is no. there like a, hey, hey, fellow? Nah, they, they won't because our, our decoys are on the sites and they would be able to see if someone's putting like a, you know, it, it would be out there. We're, we're, we're too involved with the other catchers there. It would be tipped to us, but. Do you think these people can be rehabilitated? Um, the only, my personal opinion, I think the only thing I think that can help them is God. I think them, you know, I believe in God. I'm a big believer in God, and I believe that that's the only way that they could they could find a like solution to their craving to want to meet a minor. I think finding God and and you know having Him help is the only way. I don't think there's anything I could I could beat one's head in, and they're still gonna wait till they're healed and go back out and do it again. You know, and that and that's one thing. Um, a lot of people, a lot of com- we get. I get tons of messages now, like tons, 
And I would say 95% are great positive messages. The other 5% of the messages or comments are should be doing more. You should be beating their ass. You shouldn't be recording. You shouldn't be doing that. You should, you know, they have their own, you know, two cents. And it's like, of course I would love to beat them up. You don't think, like, I want to grab them by the throat and, sm- like, of course. Like, anybody else would, yeah. you know. Um, but I can't. I do it once, and then it's over with. You know what I mean? Like, then we can't, and and we got to think long-term goal. We're not, we're not, I can't have impulse decisions. I get so many people saying, I admire your cool. I, w- I wouldn't be able to do it. I'd be, I would do, I would just lose it. I would beat them up. Sure. And it's like, yeah, but you're, you're not being realistic. Like, of course we all want to do that. But if we want to make a real difference or even a small difference or make an impact on it, we got to think long term. We got to control our impulse decisions and we got to make the right choices. And so for anyone out there that's, you know, constantly asking me, why don't I do this? Why don't I do that? I want to, but I can't to keep it legal so I don't get charges. So I, you know, so I don't, you know, get in a position to where I can't do this anymore. I got to keep it all by the book. And you know, and then that's where the punishments come in. You know, the push-ups, the squats. People go, oh, that, you, you think that's doing anything? I feel like you should offer them, like, almost like a little trick. Like, you should be like, hey, if you sign a waiver, you got to go, like, five minutes in the cage with me, and we won't call the cops. But then right after, yeah. you beat the shit out of the cops are there. <laughs> well, it's I mean, done the, before. The, yeah, the, the push-ups and the, and the squats, though, are what people don't understand is, yeah, we're, like, embarrassing them, obviously, and we're exposing them and, and making them admit as they're doing them. I will never talk to a 13-year-old. I'm a child predator. But even though they're probably just blowing what, smoke. But what it really is is a stalling tactic. Everybody wants to think, oh, you're just trying to get content. You're trying to – no. it's we're, we're doing this to kill time. Well, that's you, good to you know. know how I also wondered. I wondered myself. Like I was like, "What's well, a stalling tactic till the cops this? come?" That now that makes that makes a lot of sense so, on that. Uh, it's like when people ask me that, like, "Oh, you're doing it for this?" Or that. It's like, have you ever confronted a child predator? Do you know how easy it is to keep them standing there and talking and admitting stuff? It's not easy. When they know you're not the cops, they know they're allowed to walk away. We've told them it twenty like, times that they're free to go because we, we have it, to. The yeah. stuff that we're doing is other catchers aren't doing because, like. Because it's something I thought, I'm like, we got to keep them there until the cops come. So what better way is to, you know, almost make them feel like they don't have another choice. Even though they do, they don't have to do any of that. Right. It's like, all right, you don't want to do the squats? Cool, I'm calling your wife right now. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, the weird thing, That's why I like that you hang that over their head, too. Show them of course. Yeah, and then people want to show sympathy and, for well, yeah, it. You have to have leverage. I mean, what, yeah, some, sometimes, exactly. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, people will go up with zero information, and that, that's what made me valuable in the communities prior to what we were doing is that, you know, they would do catches and only have the person's, you know, username, their alias, and be like, hey, Johnny, and the, the guy's name might be Nicholas, but they, you know, they don't know who he is, and they're just hoping the guy's going to sit there and talk to them, uh, but they have no information. So that, that, it definitely helps. I yeah. mean, we have a way better success rate of a guy having a long conversation with us um, when we have info rather than when we have less. Um, but yeah, when I walk up and I say their name, you know, and yeah. I'm like, yeah. their full name. I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, and they're like, oh. I'm like, what's going on? What are you, what are you doing here? You know, like, yeah. what's, yeah. what's, uh, yeah. why are you sitting here in the dog section? Yeah. Oh, you're not? And then they try to like walk away and they say, oh, you know, like they make up excuses they start to justify sure. why they're there and then i you know without physically harming them or any i in a sense i tr- i corner them and say well here's all the evidence i'm well, like what I, do you want to do unless you've been trained opposite like have you ever been served papers like it's impossible somebody comes up to you and you're like hey are you making you'd be like no like it's like yeah. impossible yeah oh been served like, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah well i mean their like, picture is blown like, up yeah, on you want a picture <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes i do and you've been served <laughs> the um well first of all you guys are like superheroes man and you've especially you're like thank you for using your powers for good and not Fuck evil yeah thank I, you. I would be probably trying to like you know blackmail ex-bosses or something like that for uh, a payout you know but yeah. I'm, yeah. i've had a good childhood and teenage years i had fun yeah i bet yeah 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 <laughs> but the um yeah and also like do you get into a situation now where you've seen so many people that have done so many wrong things that now everybody you meet, you're like, well, let's see what's in this laptop. Absolutely. Uh, and I don't, you know, I, it, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's even a thing with girlfriends, you know, like the people say to me, like, well, you know, if you have the ability to go through your girlfriend's phone or Facebook and know where she's at at yeah, all times. I, I have the ability to do that remotely. Yeah, but I don't, <laughs> I, I don't do it. You know, it's, it's something you would think I would abuse, but I don't. And, and the reason why is because 
you know, you do it once with a girlfriend, you, you're never going to trust her again, which is irrelevant to what we're talking about. But no, uh, it's not. It's not because I you know, don't want to know. Yeah, that's better, right. <laughs> you know, be, and, and the reason I ask, because then this is why it ties back in. And this is kind of what you said before about like looking around. It's like, how do you go about? Well, do you have kids? No, I have do three. You, do you have kids? No. I have three godchildren, though. Three god. So, yeah, like, godchildren. It, it's almost like. And I have baby sisters, and I feel that protective. It's urge seeing as the well, matrix. You know? It's like, see, it's like you know too much. It's like, how could you well, ever live your life without things, crippling I think, fear? I think we spoke about this. So, I'd, I'd uh, like, looked into this, like, a while ago. And uh, I actually, through Matt Brown, talked to, like, some people who, like, do this, like, on, like, some high levels, like, ex, like, military guys. And, like, they said the shit they've seen is like has made it so that it's been hard for them to enjoy their lives, enjoy their own children, seeing like dumpsters full of fucking like dead babies and like wheelbarrows full, like just sick shit, like sick shit. And it it's, uh, but I think, fuck man, so, someone's got to do it. People yeah. got to go up against this. We talked it's, about, and you know, our, uh, us being fighters, like we have that, that protective, you know, uh, instinct. Worse. Like it's very strong. A lot of them can tell too. Like it's, you know, they'll look in the back. I can see you're getting very angry, or like, you know, like the one kid. Uh, I think I had like I, it was like the it was like a Thursday, so I had sparring day, and I had a mark on my face, my cauliflower ear, and he's sitting there looking at me. He goes instead of calling the cops, could you just like hit me a couple of times? Yeah, that was. <laughs> great. He goes, can you just like beat me up or yeah, something? You wish. And I'm like, and I told him, I said, dude, I'd love to like beat your ass right now, but I can't, you know. But he was a juggalo too. Yeah, yeah, he was he was shaking. I don't in know his if you boots. know what that is. Uh, that's yeah, uh, I ICP. Yeah. yeah, sorry, juggalo f- uh, ICP fans, but yeah. that's not all juggalos. It's yeah, not, not all, all juggalos. Just most of them. It's not all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ninety five percent. It's not all gas digital <laughs> listeners. So the uh, <laughs> but no, a lot of them though. Like and the problem is more importantly, like we don't know what they're doing there. Like they say, like a lot. Oh, we're just here to meet. We're just here to say hi. I'm just. Yeah, so what, you say hi, and then she, you know, the rebellious child that's trying to get away from her parents or, you know, just be rebellious because teenagers are, especially at 12, 13, 14 years old, you know. 12, 16. Yeah, they don't know. And, no, they don't know, they don't know, but think about, you know, how many kids, though, are, they, they parent themselves. Parents are gone, they're doing, and are the rebellious, they hate their parents, so they're on chat, they're trying to get attention from other people. Sure. So grown man, no problem. Then... What? Oh, just trying to meet? But then here's the biggest thing I, I, I say every time is, like, sex trafficking. Yep. It's the biggest. Mm-hmm. It's huge. So, and, yeah. well, that's the guy we were talking about. Just to, to, you know, kind of illuminate what you're talking about. The guy that we had talked about um, was the ex-CIA guy who uh, then left, and now he works, you know, hunting down these, these sex traffic rings. So when he was in the CIA, they would come across these sex traffic rings, and this was a great way for some of these cartels and, and these other things to, to make money to, you know, to finance everything else that they were doing. And the CIA wouldn't do anything about the sex trafficking because, you know, the, the suspected terrorism was the bigger mark, right? So then when he got out, he was like, we got to break up the sex trafficking. And he's the guy that's like, it ruined life for me. I can't look at a strip club the same way. You've had like, the same. So I, my, I, mine's a different guy. No, I think we had the, we had this no, conversation. No. Yeah, oh, I told Nick. you that this happened. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. He said he well, look at a strip club. This. He's like, you just, you know, uh, you used to go. He no. was in the Marines. You you go to the strip club and you you know your buddy would have a bachelor party and now he's like, these girls are sold into slavery. Literally, and he, and he knows yeah. it and, That's it, how and it can't. Is. So like life, he looks at. It's almost you know, like it numbs them from joy in other parts of their you life. You get a pedicure. It's, it's like a really smaller yes. scale, like on a sol- smaller scale. That's how I felt after we started doing this. I was telling him, "You guys like, must." The way you're saying, you're questioning like, everybody. Feel, you see, I feel yeah. awkward flirting with a 28 year old woman. I feel almost weird. Like, you're like show me your ID. Show. Let no, me, scan I'm, it. I'm like, talking about like just. Because she, like she was a being, big kid fl- one day. Just being, fl- yeah, like, just flirting with her. Just, like, or, like, in my head, I'm like, I feel like it just makes me feel weird. Like, am I doing something wrong now? Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, because, yeah. like, like some, Yeah, like, what if you were this mega popular, I don't know, like, a movie star who, like, is notorious for only dating 19-year-old women? Like, is it weird if this guy is looking at 17-year-olds and 16-year-olds and then waits for them to be 19? Or is that noble because he's not acting on his impulses? I mean, according, that, to it's law, t- it's, it, according to the law, it's legal. According to most people's opinions, it's, it's, it's horrible. Is a <laughs> this is a bigger problem than I think people. I, I mean, we're all old enough. How old are you, Ryan? Twenty nine. I'll be. 30 you're a little younger, and you're 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 all younger. When I was a kid, 
the biggest star in the world was Britney Spears. And there was like a countdown on MTV until she turned 18. What? That was like yeah. the thing. It's so like the whole idea was like she was the queen of jail bait. Like that's that was, so but that's that's America. That's like the bad, uh, bad, bad baby. baby. And yeah. you can't tell me the fact that she was 15 early with early development didn't lead to her popularity. Well, let me, let me, while, that, while you're bringing that up, uh, I actually made this point to a few people. So you guys, I'm sure, are all aware of her making a couple million dollars in a night on OnlyFans. Yep, yep. So she turns 18. She goes on OnlyFans. She makes a couple million dollars. That's that's a, a significant amount of purchases or subscriptions or whatever people do to make money on OnlyFans. Sure. He has an OnlyFans. The day before, she was 17. They, so, so at midnight, the, they all became attracted the, to the her, right? The minute before. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The minute exactly. before. That's a great yeah, the point. The minute before, they were not attracted right. to her. But at it wasn't midnight, a bunch of 18 year olds subscribing. Now, you know, right. It wasn't a bunch of 19, 18 year olds saying, oh, that, you know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. What, yeah, she was overdeveloped for her age, whatever, yeah. but she's still a child. You know? So, for sure. I, I, I don't, it's impossible to take the, the um, it's impossible to take the side of a pedophile, but I have to try at least to give some sort of counter perspective advocate, here. I have to. Quite literally. So is there, is there are people I know that were more mature at 16 years old than I was at 25. And there's other people I know that are in their thirties right now that are immature. Is, is age an arbitrary number for the ability to make these discerning decisions? Is, is a 16 year old any less, capable of making a decision for themselves than an 18 year old what what makes i would 18? say yeah i mean I, I don't i don't know the science behind it or why they made 16 in some states a legal age of consent and i, I don't know the, the science behind that but uh i just say you know stay with stay with people around your age or whatever your preference is well, but stay yeah, away yeah. from kids you know like yeah. if they act like a kid stay away from them if they're 18 19 they <laughs> act like they're 12 stay away from them if you've been alive longer <laughs> than <laughs> like you double their age, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that's half your age plus seven. Yeah, you know, we're not psychologists, it's in we're the just Quran. Kind of predators. It's in the you Quran. Know what I mean? Half yeah. your age plus seven, yeah. and yeah, we don't know the psychology behind it. And if we did, it, you know, we we would try our best to, to educate people on that as well. But what we do know is how to catch these people, how to embarrass them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and our goal isn't to be mean people, our goal is to educate people and our parents and children. And, it's, and again, what you guys are doing is you're not like picking somebody that's 17 and a half years old. You're picking nine year olds, 13 year olds. I'm not, right. I, I, I want to be very clear that I'm not coming down on the side. Oh, no, of the we didn't think here. that. But, at the, you know, for. It's a good you, question, but we, I don't think any of us could really answer that. And if, you we, know? if yeah. we caught a 20 year old talking to, or 20, or 19, 20 year old, someone who's right above age, but like mm -hmm. still. We haven't necessarily came across that yet. We had one that we were about to, and the kid got in his car and, like, left. Yeah. But, like, yeah, we – I mean, he was, like, 22. But if we had – we talked about it, like, what we would do, and we still kind of, like – I guess it would depend on the degree of it. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, maybe we wouldn't expose them so much. Maybe we wouldn't call it – like, maybe we would, you know, get their parents involved and really try to get them help and then – have them kind of like a judgment us. call. Sure. Yeah, like yeah. trying to like say, hey, it's not too late. You're only 19, 20, but like, come on, a 13 year old? Yeah. Well, like, come on, what are we doing here? Well, there's those Romeo and Juliet laws in some states where it's like you're 18 and she's 14 yeah. and they have some sort yeah, of. And that, that's there. what I'm saying. You're like, a senior, like, she's a freshman. I've been a senior and I've, you know, you look, I, I, everyone's, been, I feel like who's been in high school has had situations where they've thought about that or that's just a situation anyone thinks about. Like, what about a, Sure, you're all in the same school. What about yeah. a senior and freshman? It's like, yeah, you know, like it's still, it's one of those things. It's just there's yeah. no it's there's tough, no man. set. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's tough. no set, you know, standard on it. I guess I mean, it's your own personal opinion. How could uh, anybody like help you guys with what you're doing? Like, do you guys like I don't know if you guys like funding or what the like any way like sharing your your stuff? Like, what do you guys think? I mean, I just think if there's a cause to take up for, this is a hell of do, one. well. First, before that, do you suggest people? take up your cause would you suggest other people do what you do no i doubt it yeah no, I, absolutely I not say it's that. very not dangerous with, without your like skills and acumen like how you know what i mean it yeah it'd be very difficult i would imagine not not only is it difficult but you know we put our lives at risk you know these we, these guys could uh, we're putting them 
I mean, uh, there's not many charges, if not the any. Corner, that, you're cornering an animal. Right. This and is yeah. probably the worst thing in, in, a, in a concealed carry state. Right. Concealed and concealed and we've been state. told by almost every police officer, every sheriff, every detective, we've been told how dangerous these specific offenders are. You say they're um, the worst. Yeah, that yeah. they're the worst. They're the most violent. Well, because um, look what happens uh, to them in jail. They'll do anything to stay out of jail. I mean, it's very well known if you're right. a, sil- a child predator and you go to jail. Yeah. That's and they know what's going to happen to them. Yeah, there's not too many people that have... The background as Ryan does to be able to you know go and find that and to actually to mix point corner them you've right got, you've exactly. got to have corner them. Corner and them. he's gonna get them in real life I'm gonna get them when I get home no exactly mm-hmm. you know and I'm not invincible because I'm a fighter I don't think like that that's not my mo like where I'm, I'm you know I'll just beat anybody up they try something I mean obviously does it help that if someone would try something that I am a trained you know professional fighter of mm-hmm. course so yeah I wouldn't recommend other people going out and doing it because. You know, they might be trigger happy. They might carry, you know, on them. They might, whatever the case is. I think how we go about it, and I get everyone's concerns, my parents, his parents, everybody. You know, there hasn't been a single person that says, you got to be careful, this, that, this, that. But we take all, you know, angles of it, you know, make sure. You know, that's why a lot of it is done in Walmart, in a public place. Is that saying that they couldn't have a gun on them and pull it out? Sure, but we evaluate them. We watch them. You know, we, we look at them as they're Ocular walking. Ocular pat-downs. Yeah, like... Yeah, we can't touch them. Yeah, yeah. so... Sometimes we'll, we'll ask them to pull their shirt up and turn around. They don't have to, but they, they do they a do. lot of the times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so we'll get that good visual, and we'll make sure, you know. And, I mean, yeah, I personally wouldn't recommend other people to do it. I mean, I've had people reach out and ask us how they could help. They want to help. There is ways yes, they that, that was my question. So there, how could they is, help? There that is, is some question. ways. So, as you, as you said, sharing it uh, is huge. It, and it has nothing to do with, with uh, Scrappy and I's notoriety. It's about, you know, showing the predators and how, how we light. caught them. So, that's number one. Number two, we, we would, you know, we'd be happy to, to work with some other local decoys. Not, not only a female, as of right now, we're... We have, you know, some people that we're working with, but the more decoys out there, the better, the more people that are joining applications and pretending to be children. Obviously, you have to be an adult, but uh, we're, we're open to working. You guys should be getting government grants for this type of shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're... For yeah, sure. And for we sure. would like that, that, but it's just not realistic because of vigilante justice, quote-unquote, uh, they're, they're not willing to do anything with us. But if it's backed by the government, is it vigilante then? No, but, if, right. if we, but then at that point, we... Kind of we legitimize we We're agents be. at that but point. Yeah, every, but everything that be. you're doing... Up into probably the confrontation, you're doing recon- reconnaissance. You, Absolutely, there, there but none of it's admissible because it's not done by police. Chris Hansen, with to, to catch a predator, all of his decoys were police officers. Really? So uh, none of our evidence until. But there, the, there are private sector reconnaissance firms all over the place. I understand, but the, the from what we've been told by uh, every agency in the country that I've worked with, and Delray and Palm Beach County sheriffs, that you know, that our evidence is not evidence unless the predator admits to it in front of the police officer, and they cannot go off the chat logs. They can ask them questions, but until it comes out of their mouth, it's not evidence. So, are, not even their name. Wait, wait. So then, are, are the people that you're confronting, and then they're getting arrested? Are are they not getting charged with anything? It just depends. Some might some have, some haven't. Some haven't, you know. And it's it's that's the tough thing about it. Like, um, you know, we've been told recently that that they're going to be very hard on how they go about the rest with us because the decoy. Who's going to be hard? Like how they judge it, how they go about it. You're state about attorney, the, they, the state DA, attorney. the yeah, district yeah, yeah. attorney. State they're attorney. going to look at it and go, okay, well, where was the decoy at when she when they were decoying? Oh, different state. Okay, now it involves a whole another state. She wasn't here. That so, drops one so felony. That drops off. one wow. felony. Yeah, like they're looking at it like that, and they told they're us looking to bust you down instead of take your information. I mean, basically, sort yeah, of, yeah, in a way. And they're not. They're not. They want to. I hate government. But See, it's the like police aren't that way. Base. It's not the police. It's, not it's, the police. it's the higher ups yeah. that they have to go through to get the charges done. So the police you. down here, they looked at us and said, you know, the lieutenant sergeant shook my hand. He's like, I have daughters. He goes, thank you very much, you know, mm-hmm. after he arrested the guy. And it, once it goes up to, you know, district attorney and everything goes up higher, then it's like. Oh, that's beyond. So you do all this work. Yeah, and they'll find and this guy, all you this get stuff. him to admit and it. So do the police. It takes them hours to write reports on this yeah. stuff. You know, four or six hours they spend per guy, and then the state attorney's like, oh, so, oh they messed up the girls in, so in the, this state. We're throwing out the whole case. Yeah. yeah. But but the, that, that's why I wanted to bring up in the beginning. We can do something the police can't. 
We can expose these guys on the internet. We can reach out to their families. We can reach out to their we're jobs. We're going to bring it down on yeah, them Yeah, the police on. aren't going to do yeah. that. I'm not going to. We're Since we know now how the police are going to handle it. Yeah. Um, I'm you got to do it internally. I'm going to be. I'm going to be mean as I am going to be mean as hell because I want. I generally like when they start justifying their actions. That's what makes me just like see re- like I'm pissed off. Mm. And we've been pulling the reins back because I'm like, all right, let's not be too much. Like we don't want people. Screw that! Like I'm, it's at a point now where we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna make them do <laughs> as many push-ups as I want them to until they they literally say they can't. You know, uh, have like, you been wrong about anybody yet? No, no. you're bad. No, they've a done their due diligence. I'm thousand. sure. Yeah, yeah, they're showing up. There. Yeah, we we had one case recently. Um, Ryan had to had to take over this one because the guy wouldn't talk, but. So we're looking, and Ryan goes, I think that's the guy. And I go, I don't know. It didn't really look like his picture. It kind of did, not really. Ryan's like, man, I'm telling you, that's him. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, we're rolling the dice on this one. going to walk. So I walk up to him. I say his name. Looks at me, just takes off, starts walking. So I start following him. I'm like, hey, my man. Like, you know. And then I start to back off because I'm like, this dude's just not answering me. And then Ryan's like, no, nah, it's him. So Ryan stays on him like glue with the camera and follows him throughout Walmart. He's like, you got the wrong guy. This ain't, you guys are going to get arrested. You guys have the wrong guy. I'm not who you have, you know, I think, I'm like, in my head, like, oh my God, like, I don't know if this is the guy. Like, it was bullshit. Yeah. Walked out of Walmart, walked two miles down military. We follow him for two miles. Whole time he's like, call the police. You're going to get arrested. You're this harassment. You're harassment. You got the wrong guy. He parked in the, he, he parked at Walmart, but acted like he was, nah, I was just walking. I'm walking home. Cops end up coming. They detain him. The the dumbass, or pardon me, the this is guys. You can curse. curse all you oh want. yeah, well yeah. the dumbass used his real number um, for the chat site and his real name. I think uh, maybe yeah. Yeah, and he you, gave the police a fake name yeah, at first, which the, was an arrestable an offense. I'll, I'll follow up with that. Yeah, but they so the we have our decoy. That's what we do. Well, if I think like this is going to be a arrestable situation or whatever. Um, in nine times out of ten, it is. You know, we're not wasting our time going over there to, you know, try to catch a guy who said hi to a thirteen-year-old. Like he had intent. He wanted yeah. to do stuff. So Very sexual. So yeah. So <laughs> this guy walks two miles down military, and Ryan's staying on him like glue. You know, and this guy's saying, "You don't got it." I text the decoy. I said, "Call the non-emergency number." That's how we do it. So I text the decoy. She calls, and then they'll. She'll end up giving my number or something because he's usually recording. My phone's the only one that's available. And I'll say, yeah. I was like, yeah, we're walking down military. I describe him. All these cops pull up. They detain him. They ask him questions. He lies to him. They interview. They ask me on camera, like, from, you know, start to finish what's going on, what happened. And I give my, my sworn statement. And they end up letting him go. Cause yeah, and they let them go. You know, you, you can't lie to the police about who they, who you are. If you're being charged with a crime and they ask you for your uh, for an ID, you have to give it to them. If they ask you for your ID and you're not being convicted of a crime, or you're not being accused of a crime, you don't have to give them an ID. So in this case, since our evidence is not generated by the police, he, him giving a fake name and not providing ID isn't a crime because what we did is an evidence so that he's not being charged with a crime or suspected of a crime because we're not police. So it, the guy ended up walking free and, and to not to top it all off, which we didn't release his video yet, but to top it all off, we're walking back, which, you know, two miles, one direction, you got to walk two miles to get back. So four miles later, we're pulling into Walmart. We see a, a white Honda Civic pull out. It's him. I already had his VIN number of his car. It was in our notes. We knew it was his car. He pulls out of Walmart and honks a horn twice at us, you know, to be, be a little bit of a, a dick. So, uh, you know, we we haven't posted the video yet. He didn't get arrested. We don't know if the police are going to follow up with this. Uh, but that was like guy, our first one pretty much where the guy ran off like that. Really? He didn't, he didn't like, talk at all. And so he obviously has done it before. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah, no well, question. He but I know knew. where he lives. I know where he works. I know everything about the guy. And, and the entire I – mean, it had to have been, what, two hours, of an hour and a half of walking? I yeah. forget what it was. It, it was, was a long time. It was a long – He just kept saying, you're harassing me. You're stalking me. Get away uh, from me. You threatened <laughs> me because I told him his address or told him I know where he lives, but I didn't say anything threatening. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, you know, he said everything in the book that he was going to get the cops to do when they showed up. But he was so confident that we were the ones that were going to get in trouble when they came. But he's the one walking away. So it just it didn't really make any sense. I think he just didn't know what to do, and uh, 
He's yeah. panicking. Can yeah. you imagine? Like, yeah. you're getting confronted. Like, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not a child predator. Hand so in don't... the cookie jar. Like, you're, Literally. Yeah, you're, you're, you're stuck. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the guy, had he, he resembled the pictures a lot. Him walking away made me feel like it definitely was him. Obviously, there was that 0.01% chance that it wasn't him. But if it wasn't him, we would never post the video. Yeah. And I'd apologize, which I hope the guy would never run into a situation where we get the wrong guy. I don't think it'll ever happen. Um, I, don't I don't think it'll ever happen either, but, you know, it, in that case, it definitely was the right guy, and and uh, I was so sure of it. That's why we followed him uh, to the lengths that we followed him. And, yeah. yeah that's how, how do you plan to expand this and keep this growing and keep, you know, doing more good like this? Well, that it goes back to what I was saying. You know, the, the more decoys that we can get, the more people, you know, the more area that we can cover for social media and chat rooms, are, are you looking for catches. volunteers or is this? Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I mean, but yeah, and like people gotta understand it's it's a lot, you know. Like people think this is just so easy. Like, you know, these decoys are are talking to these guys sometimes for months. You know what I mean? Like, the, and having full on conversations throughout the day. Mm. Like, so it does take a lot, but you know, there and it it takes sacrifice on our end too. Like, you know, how many times we've had to cancel things because or like we're, we have plans and then our decoy hits us up and said, hey. Baba wants to meet right now for sex. You gotta be ready to go. We gotta go. Yeah, and like you know, a lot of people could happen right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, literally. And people, you know, they're out there watching and listening. To this like, if people think we're not handled the right way, you're more than welcome to go out there and do it yourself. You know what I mean? Like, we don't like, like, don't I, I do. I recommend it. it? Yeah. No, <laughs> but I mean, like, we get so many comments and messages. Like, it's the internet. You're not doing scrappy, this. Scrappy is the internet. You know. Come on. No, but it's but that's but you gotta understand. We're putting this out there publicly, and people are seeing these other people comment this type of stuff, and they're going, yeah. "Hmm, you know what? Maybe they're right." No, and then they're, I would immediately and, think that guy's a pedophile. But they're not. <laughs> but they're not though. You know, you know? I mean, there's people that will back up those people saying like, "Oh, you know, the, you're this entrapment. You're doing this. Uh, what about the 13 year old girl? What kind of punishment she getting into?" Like, people don't understand. Like, I mean, it's. it's well, I don't pl- understand. It's pl- Where did you guys disagree on? <sighs> What was your disagree? What did you say about, don't worry about the don't worry about the don't worry about the comments? No, I, 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 yeah, but and, and I'm not, but I'm just like there's people that are gonna view this, and so I'll answer it now, so I don't ever have to comment back or saying it like, like we're not doing this because we want pats on the back. I love, I think it's awesome that articles have been written written up, you know, pages. You guys just said it, you know, calling us heroes. I don't think we're heroes by any means. I think we're guys that are doing the right thing. We're spending our our time doing the right thing. I mean, we could be out doing anything we want, not caring less, you know, but at the end of the day, like, we have hearts and we have people that are related to us that have been through it and victims of it and yeah, so want to make a feel difference. It's your responsibility as a man. Yeah, like, yeah. exactly. If I, if I can that. do it, if he has the capabilities of finding all this info on him, like you said, he's, thank you for using your skills for what you're doing, Ryan. That's exactly it. That's what it comes down to. People think this is just some publicity stunt or something, which we did it for, he did it for two years with nobody knowing who he was. We did it, me and him, for two months before we ever posted anything. And then one MMA page took it, and then it just kind of it took fire from there. And it should, in the sense of people letting, you know, the, the severity of this, like the how bi- bad this problem is. This is a bad, you know, situation that's out there. And it's way worse than what people think. And if we can put it out there, and try to expose these guys one by one and show that, like, hey, guys, this is very serious. You guys, everyone else needs to take this serious. You know, and you, these, these people could be your neighbors. So let, let's, let's move on to, like, something preventative, right? If you are a parent that's watching this or if you are, you know, somebody who has young sisters, young siblings, young people in their lives, Right from the experience of you doing this for three years now, you're saying two and a half. So yeah, that, yeah. What, what steps can these people be taking to insulate their vulnerable loved ones from these predators? I mean, monitoring their their, internet their devices, usage, yeah. any of their devices. You know, like you got a, a child who's you know under seventeen, eighteen years old. Mm-hmm. You know, like maybe. I, Forty-year-old parent too. doesn't know how to use Snapchat. They don't give a shit. They've never been on social media. Well, they then need to be educated. They need, they need to be educated. YouTube. I mean, who doesn't know how to use Bing, Google? If you don't, then ask a friend. You know, just how how to monitor my child's phone. Specific. Give me three specifics that a young single mother with young children right well, now without can hacker hear. capability. Well, without hacker, you capability. could dumb it down give me, for give us. Me, yeah, <laughs> give me three things that Open. she can do right now to protect her children. Open their iMessage or their messages if they have an Android. 
go in their Snapchat, ask them who their friends are, um, and then you know uh, just just go through their phones. You know, just and then outside lines. of that, I don't. I mean, I, nowhere, I don't know. nowhere. So there's there's more, it's, it's simple, huh? Well, it's simple. I, I mean, I, okay. No, I got. I don't know. I, no, I, I have no. To, you know what I mean? Like it's what you would think. No, yeah, yeah, I got to their I, phone. Watch what they're doing. No, I got to push back. I didn't have social media growing up, but if my mom went through my dresser drawer while I was in school, I didn't talk to her for a month. So I mean, there is that personal autonomy as a kid. Yeah, you're. You don't want to be a helicopter parent, but you also don't want to be a parent that is has their head. And that's the kids that are doing it. Both. Okay, I'm going to be very specific. How can a parent do this without their kid finding out they're doing it? Well, Life know where they're going also. Life360, well, that's what I was about to bring up. There's, there's an app called Life360, which can give you the location of your family um, without them being alerted that they're being tracked at that time. So, I, I mean, I, I'm not that's sponsored. It's called Life360? Yeah, I'm not sponsored by them, nor do I even know in depth of what their product does. But I know it's a very common one for children to be tracked in their location. It's not going to show you their text messages, though. I mean, if your child's under 18, know, where, know what they're doing. Know where they're at. Check in. Like, I mean, growing up, you know, I'm a, I'm a boy. My, my dad's still anywhere I went. He either called the parents. He, like, he wouldn't just let me go anywhere. Yeah, and just but do also anything. as a teenager to try to push that as far as you can. Right? Yeah, well, I mean, but we're, we're talking about 12 and 13-year-olds. These, mm-hmm. these, Sometimes you know, less. Even less. Yeah. Yeah. That they're, they're on there talking and thinking, that, like, you know. Yeah. And maybe, like you said, their parents are helicopter parents. They're very protective, so that's why they do it. They're rebellious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm going to go, oh, this guy's older. Awesome. So, so it's counterintuitive almost. Yeah. So the more you check, the more they want to It could be both way. ways. Sure. So so in the end, like, know where they're going. You know what I mean? Like, Is, um, I've read that, that uh, the video games, I sound like so old, the video games, but I've, I've read that there's, um, like, World of Warcraft and some of these, like, open world games, these people meet up there. And have and, and form these relationships through these avatars, right? And then they eventually meet in person. Is right. that and a lot of them will pretend to be something they're not. You know, like it started mm-hmm. off with the term catfish, and it's it's basically the same way, except they make this alternate personality that they live online, and it's so much more common than than I'd like to believe. You know, you'd like to believe it. It didn't happen in my teenage years. You know, it wasn't a thing. Yeah, people played video games, but nobody was. Like nobody Online was with in, the world. Had, had their you know a VR headset on yeah, yeah. in a different I, I universe. The metaverse. Like, so how are you going to yeah. monitor things when they're in the metaverse going forward? And these things are decentralized. That's, I don't know. It, well, it, when we get there, we'll have to figure it out. Yeah. But like, like from my understanding, it's like think about think about how like a thirteen year old's on a on a chat, a teen chat, Florida teen chat. That's a you know a public one. Anybody can get on there. And then these grown men are having accounts like they're fifteen year olds. And they're having conversations, and then they finally admit, okay, I'm not really 15. I'm 30 years old. Mm-hmm. You know? That's and what I was, yeah. That, that's what that's happened. What I was thinking, that was, I was our, thinking, our they second catch. They would pretend to be, well, how, now how did you, how were you able to identify them? Through, well, like, he the, sent, like, backtracking his, them? His first photo, his first photo he sent was not him. It was, like, of a musician. Of a musician. And, and then, like, yeah, and then our decoy keep prying, like, listen, I'm not going to hang out until you really, and like, okay, and then it takes a selfie, you know, and it's a, 55 year old guy from Miami. Yeah, and you I know what I mean? To, on a teen chat. Do reverse right. facial recognition, which is not like reverse image searching. I'm measuring 120 points of the face and then taking that against a very large database and identifying who that person is. Now, what if your decoy as an adult was talking to an actual kid? So you're just uh, kind of trying to quickly move uh, move on. So anytime, any wait, other wait, time. that that's a great question. So you're talking about they're they're obviously talking to multiple people at the same time. Well, yeah, but she won't because, respond. I bet yeah, some would message if, once, she, once she, oh, well, they always well, say sex like age a, location. A, they always say that's how this conversation start. What's your ASL? Okay. Yeah. Age, yeah. Sex, ASL? location. Yeah. She never yeah. starts a conversation. They say that's how it starts. Yeah, yeah, our decoy never starts a conversation. She has an account online, and the personal message say, "Hey, what's up, cutie? What's up?" She'll say, "Hey, how you doing? What's your ASL?" They'll say, oh, 40. Or they said 14. 14. Then and we're lying. 14, and, and they were lying. Lying and trying to like she, lure them well, she somewhere. Won't, she won't entertain pursue. it. Yeah, okay. she won't pursue it. Because then That's she probably just drops it. a whole it. other sect of guys that could be, you know, acting like they're a kid and then show up somewhere True. and they kidnap a... Yeah. You know and that, I mean? yeah, yeah. And we'll get them one day. I mean, uh, I was we were talking earlier, Scrappy and I were talking before we even got here. Uh, one of the people that decoyed for is Courtney Elizabeth. She's also a catcher. As well. She decoys and catches in her state. Um, she, she told me that she saw one of the guys that we caught in the same teen chat room using the same username t- this morning. 
So the guy we had, and another, he has kids. He's got kids. He drove my, drove he two, has his address. He drove two yep. hours. He drove two hours to two meet hours a little to girl, meet a thirteen-year-old little Walmart on a Friday night. Oh yep, and we and yeah, this morning I get the text message from her that that he's uh he's still he's in the same chat room with that. He didn't even change his username. That's how dumb this guy is and dangerous he is. Are there? Um, yeah, shout out to Courtney. Are yeah. there? Are shout there hot spots? Are there certain areas of the country? That are known to be worse is L.A. worse? Is there? I mean, are there? Places? I mean, it's everywhere. It's got it. Everywhere. Everywhere. Man. Everywhere. It's everywhere. It's and, everywhere. And that's another reason to go back to like why we do this. South Florida, there's no other catcher groups down here on this end, and I mean, it's like why if we have the capability of of doing this, even if we save one kid in the future, mm. it's worth it. You yeah. know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, he has the skills to do it. I have the the confidence of walking up to him, and the will like the control self control to not you know put my hands on him. How close have you gotten, right? To like how, you know, when you stare into the darkness, the darkness stares back, right? So, and with your capabilities, and with your capabilities, has there been discussions of especially when the police refuse to pursue? We, yeah. we have to do something. This yeah. guy has to be taken off the streets. Yeah, I mean, I've always wanted... And we wanted, can edit anything out if you guys... I mean, I, I always yeah, wanted... Yeah, not to implicate yourselves, yeah. actually. Yeah, I very, asked Omri, him. Very true. I asked him, uh, you know, before, like, is there a way we can get something written up from a lawyer? Like, maybe we tell him, like, hey, you know, you, we're going to call the cops or you can put these gloves on and, That's you know, box, before, box yeah. me yeah. right now. You know, like, uh-huh. of course I'd love to be able to do that. Um there's other ways. Yeah, there's other ways. I mean, we and can, we do we, it. Yeah. Yeah. I just you know, like I said, we don't want to implicate ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just hard, you know, and that's that's why we can go as far, you know, far as you know, making them do squats, push ups in the front entrance, you know, making them announce it. Like, it, there's so many reasons for that tactic. It's yeah, a it's solid crappy. tactic. It's like right. you just talked about. You put in all these man hours. You spent six months of your life on somebody. You got them. They're right. fucking evil. And then they just get to walk away. I mean, not all the times. I mean, we'll do everything we can to not let them walk away. But I mean, we're doing everything. Like we're we're notifying their family, their job. No, no, I do. We're, I'm we're not doing, coming to you. We're doing. Oh, of course, I'm not coming to you. No, no, I'm saying, saying, how do you handle that frustration? How do you I mean, process that defeat? Well, it's it, not just it, us. It's, it's our decoy too. She goes by Tcoy. Uh, her name's Tori. She uh, she does she decoys for a living. That's her job. And I can't, you know, she talks to people for sometimes months, sometimes years, and she relies on us. Uh, like, you know, she, she works with other organizations, too. That's why I mean years. But uh, she, sometimes she'll be talking to someone for multiple years, and then she has to hope that the, the group that's going to go confront these, this predator uh, is going to be able to talk the guy into staying. You know, and sometimes the guy just walks away like nothing happened, or they don't get out of their car, or they just speed off immediately as they see a camera. And then she has to think, oh, Crap, I, I just spent two years talking to that guy. I'll never hear from him again. It's got to be over. frustrating. Yeah, yeah so that's ha- why we make a good team, though. Like, yeah, we make a good team. Because of him having the background and being able to say, okay. And then me being able to look him in their eye and, like, you know, and I will say there's probably been a couple of them that were probably more scared of anything of me just, like, getting in. Up, yeah, man. looking at him and saying, like, you know, what the fuck you thinking, dude? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and then they're, like, chill. So, I mean... Have you had the opposite? Have you had somebody that was almost like grateful to be caught? Like thank grateful? God. Yeah, like thank God this is over. Like, no, no, no. 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 Exactly. That would happen on Hanson sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, they'd be like, the, the going like what like you were saying. Like mm-hmm. How do we expand this? I mean, we have obviously um, it might be a little bit. It could be next month. I don't know, but we plan on eventually doing our own sting houses and doing the whole, you know, catching them, you know, with them. Well, coming I, in, once we go there, then then we'll be able to get solid arrest. Well, I gotta tell you, with the data you guys have, not to not to give you guys business ideas here, but the data that you guys have, and with how articulate you are, and with the anecdotal information that you've acquired, uh, you know, I think that every parent in every school district would want to know what you know, and you can arm them with information, uh, and that would be something that. Mm-hmm. You know, you could absolutely, you're talking about grants. Maybe you can't get grants to do what you're doing, but I can't see any school district in America that wouldn't want to have you guys speak to their kids for an hour at a, at a, uh, 
uh, what are they called when everybody gets together? An assembly. An assembly, an assembly yeah, an auditorium. Right. Yeah. And also to speak to a, a board of education meeting where parents can come out and, and arm the community Let them know how with serious. the information yeah. that you have and, and with some solutions, you know, that they can help save their children. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can't. Maybe you can't be everywhere at all. It's the Batman thing. You guys can get a couple of them, but you can't get all of them. But you can, and, and this is why, you know, Mick, thank you so much for having these guys on. This is, you know, we may, you know, introduce somebody to this, and they can contact you and arm themselves with the tools and information they need to save their kid. Yeah, we'd be yeah. happy to help anybody, a school, a parent. I mean, that's it's, why we do it. That's why we're doing it. You know, yeah, and so. people can help us by... Uh, you know, sharing our stuff and le- and by, so other people are aware. You know, so maybe it all so maybe it gets shared to twenty people, but there's one of those people that's a parent that has a thirteen year old kid who goes, you know what? Let me look at your device. And hold on, you're talking to a twenty six year old. Yeah. And then right there, boom. Mm-hmm. You know that could be what all this is. You know, I think before. I think more again because just from somebody that that you know has been around teenage girls when I to my two younger sisters that's going to be a tough one let me see your phone let me see your iPad is going to be a tough one for any parent but maybe there's they some pay for it so but that could maybe, be a good that could a, be a good kind of that's a, a tough one like an app to figure out there's an app like, you can almost like you know, monitor you spot yeah monitor or, or even some warning use the word spy but like that you a parent could have yeah. put if if they're buying that phone for that kid they can have access to whatever's on that screen, whatever they want through through sure. Yeah. Or maybe I, I'm thinking more along the lines of like, what are some warning signs parents should be aware of? Like, are these guys buying them gifts? Are gifts showing up? And that like, oh, yeah, they're luring them. They're they're saying, I'll buy you this. I'll you know, let me. Oh, we'll we'll go do this. We'll go do that. You know, like so, they're trying to lure. That's what they're doing. They're trying to to like soften up the yeah. kid, basically. And, and maybe because you guys are stretched all the way, maybe this is somebody listening. Maybe this is something you can offer these guys. Come in and aggregate this information and say, look, this is the, statistically these are the steps these guys take. They're gonna they're gonna buy a gift. You're gonna if you start seeing these things around your ten year olds, you know who bought this for you or whatever. I don't know. T- take some sort of inventory that would then justify that moment of breaking the trust and being like, I need to yeah. see your iPad or whatever. Because they, you can't just you can't just be paranoid because then you're gonna scare the kid yeah. away. I mean, right. I don't know how else, us, besides us posting it and letting people, and these people admitting it on camera, what they're doing, and, you know, knowingly they're doing wrong, what else we could do? I mean. It's nuts you get these guys to admit, and then the DAs won't prosecute. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. And I get, I mean, I get so many messages. Frustrating. Insane. I get Beyond so many personal messages since this has taken off on, you don't know how much this means to me. I was a victim when I was 12 years old. I was, you know, so many people, and I'm. Then that's why I'm like, it like literally turns my stomach. And I'm like, look at this message. Like, so Ryan, I'm like, look at this, this like person like venting their heart out to me, like saying this happened to me. You know, it's like, this is real, and maybe I need to start, you know, blocking their name out and posting it. And you know, and every time someone comments, so people can really see, like, oh my goodness, like this is serious situation. I mean, sex trafficking. Yeah, it's I mean, not. It, it, it's an. It, it is an entertainment. This is. Uh, this is real life. It's awareness. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And the, once again, I say the push-ups, the squat. That isn't to, for any type of. I mean, yeah, it's a humiliating to them, but it's not for our amusement. We're not doing it literally to go. <laughs> like, sometimes do they look ridiculous when they're trying to do it, and we might smirk. Yeah, sure. You know, because they're idiots, mm. you know, and they deserve to look like an idiot and to be made fun of. But it's the best thing that could have happened to them. Imagine yeah. if someone showed up without a camera. Or, or what if really it was the older brother? What if it was yeah. what if it was Mickey walking up saying, sure. hold on. I, I, think, at, I think he kind of, that's kind of what he wants to do. You know what I'm saying? No, but it, but I've had, you know, others reach out, offering, wanting to, you know, get involved and help other fighters. Jerry Gordon, you know, wants, wants to help out. Um yeah, when you first posted it, I don't know if you remember, I reached right, you right out. I was, like, out, I was like, like, bro, you've got to tell me more about this. Yeah, yeah. it's literally what you Call said. Call yeah. right away, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we just want to help people. I mean, we got a, we got two very unique gifts, and you might as well use them, you know, and people want to call it God's work. Go ahead and call us heroes, that's fine, but in the end of the day, we're not doing it for any of that. We're doing it because we know that we're stopping, you know, potentially stopping Bad guys doing things to innocent kids. Protect the kids. Protect the children. Five six one PC. That's right. Protect the children.
But Amen. No, yeah. Um, anyone out there that has any ideas or, you know, has suggestions or anything, we're open to it. We're not closed-minded. Give your Instagrams real quick. Yeah. We'll, we'll uh, post it. It'll be posted, but just... You, uh, you can follow us at 561PC. Uh, my personal one, Scrappy at uh, 135MMA. Uh, and my, uh, mine is the number zero, like the digit. Uh, zero, D-A-Y, zero day. And uh, my name's Ryan Montgomery. Yeah, but, I mean, you guys have ideas, suggestions. We're open to it. We're, we're not, uh, we don't think we know everything. You know, we just want to help. We just want to, you know, try to Maybe make Maybe anyone forward. in law enforcement who would like to get involved and yeah. help this out on some. On some I know it's really or, sticky for them. They usually can't. They can't yeah. get involved well, at all. I, I want, couldn't have I a, want a couldn't retired have, prosecutor to help you guys. You yeah. couldn't have, like, oh, a, be fantastic. like an active yeah. police officer playing a decoy. That wouldn't work. If, yeah, we could if, if they'd be willing to do that. Yeah. But we would also have to be working with them somehow, even if it was like for five bucks a month, we would have to have an official contract for yeah, it right. to be held up in court. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But watch the, the, the ironic part, which this is a whole other discussion, but like, pretend, uh, let's say it was the, the head of the school district that, we, that, that uh, Scrappy and I catch. You think that he's not getting arrested, that he's not going to prison? Because he damn sure is. Mm-hmm. Well. I don't know. I, I can't answer that. I can't. I can't give you an actual reason why our evidence isn't evidence unless the person's important in that area. But that is absolutely the case. And so, so everybody knows, uh, we want them to get arrested. We want the worst for them, just like everybody else does. So, yep. anybody who thinks that you know, we don't try to get them arrested or they don't see the full clips, you know, because on Instagram we can only post so much. Right. Like we want the worst punishment for these guys. Of course, we lo- we'd love to turn the camera off and beat them up, but we can't. And just so, you know, to make that clear, every time we try to turn them into the cops, we do our best to get them arrested, and it's far as we can go with it. And we it, it really weighs I mean, on I think every they can't beat these guys five times. <laughs> I, know, I, like, I wish I could beat no, these guys. No, because I get, probably heard it so I get much. so many comments and messages like, so many people out there, why don't you just yeah. beat them up? Why don't you kick them in the face? Why don't you turn the, If you really wanted to help... You would just turn the cameras off and beat them up. Like, then you go ahead and do You'd that. You'd be a felon. Yeah, you, no, yeah, exactly. Go, yeah. You go get a charge and do that and try to see if that made a difference. I mean, because it's not. And we got to think long term and we got to, we got to hold ourselves as professionals. Yeah, it's, as it's, it. if anything, it's more Anyone who's not, not an to. idiot listening to this has to realize these are two guys doing great things. So, yes. any way you could, you know, show your support and support these two, you know. Oh, yeah, we appreciate we it more than we appreciate it. We don't need pats on the back. We just need the understanding that we're doing this. To you guys need help. I don't think that's even a question, Scrap. Yeah. I don't think it's even a question that you know. I mean, your your intentions are pure, and you know, you guys are doing good shit. Hundred percent pure. I mean, it's just, and we we thank you guys for having us on to help spread you know the awareness because obviously you guys know how bad the situation is and how important it is to get it out there so well next we'd love to have you back and next time we want to hear about how successful the awareness campaign has been and how many people have helped you and also how much hacking you did in your in your teenage years oh i got a crazy story (laughs) for you there you got one for us we got a little bit of time i'm gonna gonna probably pee my pants but it's a it's a long story before you go do you know uh mudge peter zapko no. You don't know that guy? Mm-mm. He's a real big guy. He was just the, most recently the Twitter whistleblower. They brought him in oh, to that, do the, okay. yeah, good gotcha. friend of mine. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, great guy. Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Yeah, really really good dude. Mm. Yeah. So, we're going to get him on once all that stuff clears. So, so now we're cool. not going to hear the great story to, to, to end cap this? Uh, no, that's how we continue this. Hey, we'll all continue right. this. But uh, real quick, can I give a shout out? To, yeah, shout out. Sure. Oh, just load him just up. a quick shout out to Courtney and t Koy for uh, both. You know, decoying and helping us out with this. Um, they're part of the, of this as well, so it's very helpful. And uh, any like you know, anyone else that uh, like I said has suggestions or want to get involved and think they could actually make a real impact for us, uh, we're open to it. Yep, and uh, and our Instagram is five six one PC like Paul, uh, Chris, Chris, yeah. Five six one PC, um, yeah. Protect you, the, protect the children. And our YouTube channels, uh, five six one Pride Catchers. But you can type in five six one PC and you'll find us there as well. So yep, guys, you. check them out. Check yep. them out. Support. This has been a great episode, man. It's great having you guys. Mick, you want to take us out? Well, this is the Slick and Thick Podcast with five six one PC. Peace. Peace. Yeah.